everyone this is Chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book haul video okay and I've been really looking to this comic book haul it's taking me a little bit of time to grab all the comic books okay it was basically the same seller uh, putting the comic books on and it was taking his time a little bit and we grabbed a couple of comic books and then another week later grab some more and then another week later grab some more grabs grab a handful here a handful there so it took about a month month and a half to get all these comics okay and the comics are from a local seller okay and this comic book is a special comic book because it's a comic book haul we're getting in because uh, someone that's been watching the videos we've been putting out has been loving the comic book hauls, the comic book reads, the comic book discussions, and all that jazz. And he sent in some funds. Thank you, Nicholas, for sending in the funds for us to do a comic book haul. Okay, so this comic book haul is a huge thank you to Nicholas for sending those funds in. I topped it up a little bit, but it's basically all of Nicholas's funds coming in. And I really wanted to get a nice selection of comics um, to do for this comic book haul and we ended up getting some amazing comics some fantastic comics right some of them were uh sort of fair value there's a couple that were like fair value right they weren't a phenomenal deal they weren't i didn't pay too too much it's sort of the going rate for them there was a handful that were you know pretty good deal okay and there is another handful here that were ridiculously amazing deal okay there's only 23 comic books here okay and they're from the golden age the silver age and basically the bronze bronze age of comics and i did a went down the rabbit hole for this a little bit because what we're ended up uh, going to do for this for this comic book haul okay and the odds are we're gonna do this from now on including uh, trying to catch up on the readings that we've got set up for reading set number four, right? So we have a, you know, I put out a little video where we, I picked 16 comic books that I was going to read and uh, sort of the, the, you guys through the comments and stuff like this picked another 16 that we we're going to read. So we have 32 books from reading set number four that we plan on reading and we're about a third of the way through, right? So there's a whole bunch of comic books we're going to read. But from now on, what we're going to do is we're going to start reading some of the comics that we're getting through these comic book hauls. And officially, we'll start it off with this one. And what we ended up doing was reading three comic books, or we're going to read three comic books from this haul. I've already shot the video for two of them. There's one more I need to shoot, okay? And we'll talk about the comics. Uh, we'll get a little, you know, dig down a little deep and go uh, get some info regarding these comics once we start taking a look at them okay and i've taken a fair bit of notes for these okay this is from one of the comic book hall readings uh one of the comic books here and i highlight stuff i usually you know surf the net and go through to a few different websites and read wiki and a uh, comic vine is really good my comic shop has some great info there's comic book database that has great info there's a uh, comic book plus where you can read golden age comics and take a look at stuff and they got a lot of great info and when you're looking at older comics golden age comics silver age comics even some modern copper age comics if they're independent on the ground you have to sort of go to multiple sites to try to get an accurate picture of who the creators were that were working on these comics so hopefully i have my info correct here okay but we'll go through it and uh see what we ended up finding okay now what i'm going to do i'm sort of going to go through it according to the list that i have here okay and there's like i don't know a few pages and i go through highlight and reread it just to just to just to make sure i'm getting most of the info that i want to talk about uh, in this comic book haul, okay? And uh, just to give you the price of what we ended up getting, uh -huh. I'll tell you what each one individually costs, but this comic book haul basically ended up costing $107 US for 23 books, right? So you can do a per, how much it costs per unit, right? The way we've done in the past, okay? So it costs $107 US, 
which was $142 Canadian. There were co there's a comic here that costs like $38 Canadian, um, which comes out to, that was the most expensive, which comes out to uh, $28 uh, US. And the cheapest one we got was a dollar Canadian, 75 cents US, okay? And that hasn't, the price that we paid, okay? Um, it doesn't really mean that the one we paid $28 for US is worth 28 times more than the one we paid $1 for, okay? When we go through it, you'll get an idea of why. That's my quick little intro to this. Uh, I may seem a little excited, but that's because I am, because I really wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, and I've been holding off doing it until we got all the comics that uh, I went through the, the funds to be able to get all these comics, okay? So let me tell you what the first comic is, okay? And the first comic is a Golden Age comic, and it's called Gangbusters, and it's issue number 39. Okay. I'm going to hold this up, and I'm going to read a little bit of uh, what it is that we ended up getting. And just so you know, we're also live streaming this on Twitch. So I got two cameras set up here that you see, and the camera that's live streaming this, people are seeing this, is a little bit below the camera that we're recording this on, and they should be capturing the same image. Okay, so let me read you some of the info on this. This is Gang Gangbusters number 39. DC Comics came out in 1954, and it's graded at good, very good. And we ended up paying 1026 Canadian, 769 US, okay. Now, the cover here is done by Leonard Starr, okay? Let me bring this closer so you see it. Okay. Beautiful work. And Golden Age Comics has some of the most amazing covers, okay? So Leonard Starr, and who is Leonard Starr? He's, uh, he did the comic book strip for, uh, on stage, and he was known for reviving Orphan Annie. I didn't know this at the time, right? I bought this because of other reasons, right? One of the reasons was because Golden Age crime, basically comic book, which I've been collecting for a while, right? Uh, Leonard Starr, though, who's done the cover for this, and he did the last story in this as well, okay? Here's some info I dug up. Uh, a lot of this info I dug up from Wiki. There was a lot that I dug up from other comic book sites as well, okay? But uh, Leonard Starr, quoting, uh, worked with Joe Simon and Jack P Kirby on their earlier romance comic titles, in particular, the Crestwood Prize title, Young Romance. Now, keep this in mind for some of the other comics we're going to look at, right? So he was involved with Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, two of the giants in the comic book industry, for the first, basically, romance comic book series that was put out in comic book format right that came out in 1947 i believe okay which was called young romance from crestwood publications prize publications prize comics okay and he's worked on some um basically golden age comics ec comics as well as timely which was a precursor to marvel and he worked on the early issues of uh, Human Torch, a submariner, so pretty important character, pretty important creator, right? Um, and so he's done the cover, and there's one backup story he's done, and there's a, uh, some other artists. This is basically a compilation, you know, six pages, five pages, eight pages of stories, right? With different artists and writers on there. Um, so there's uh, three more, actually four more, basically, people, artists that have worked on this series, okay, on this issue whose work appear here, right? One of them is Bill Illy, which has uh, basically on Comic Book Vine, I went to Comic Book Vine for this Comic Book Hall a fair bit. Um, you know, the guy's got 270 uh, comics to his, uh, to his name. And then there's Ray Bailey, which only has 46. Leonard Starr has 137. So those are the minimum number of 
comics they've worked on. I'm pretty sure there's a lot more than that, right? But there's one other person that worked on this. They got a story in this, which is Kurt Swan, okay? And I found this interesting regarding Kurt Swan. And let me read you this regarding Kurt Swan because I like controversy uh, in comics. And there's a fair bit of controversy in some of these comics that we got, right? But this is who Kurt Swan is, okay? He was, he produced, he, he worked from the 1950s to the 1980s in comic books, right? So he did the, uh, I'm gonna crack this open, so maybe we take a look at this uh, eight page story that he worked on. It's called uh, The Great Ocean Liner Robbery, okay? And let's take a look at his art before we, I take a look at this. It's a nice comic, nice cover. You can see it without the glare better. Very nice. And it's nicely intact. Great ocean liner. Take a look at this. All right. Now this guy who's done the artwork here. Okay. The pencils anyway. And beautiful, really. All right, let me show you this closer. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so quoting, and I believe I grabbed this from Wiki, okay. After DC's 1985 12-issue limited series, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and it's a pretty important series, okay, that came out in the 1980s, to sort of reshaped DC for the modern age, okay. Uh, and with the impending 1986 revision of Superman by writer, uh, artist John Byron, Swan was released from his duties on the Superman comics. Critic Wallace Har uh, Harrington summed up Swan's dismissal this way. And this is sort of the, if you consider what I'm about to read for you, this paragraph, it's sort of the norm, the way publishers especially Marvel and DC treat, treated their creators right which was gave a huge backlash one which was really the political oomph power behind independent comic book publishers right quote the most striking thing that DC did was to completely turn their back on the man that had defined Superman for three decades they closed the door and turned out the lights on the creator that had defined their whole line with no real things no pump uh, no pump nor circumstance uh, circumstance DC simply relieved Kurt of his artistic duties on Superman Kurt Swan who had drawn Superman in action Lois Lane Jimmy Olsen Superman and world's finest and drew Superboy in venture comics was one of the quintessential Superman artists of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. He became, uh, he became, uh, he became was just uh, another, he became what was just another victim of the 1980s implosion, gone, right? Which is very sad to hear, but I'm very happy to have this. It's not one of his Superman titles, comics that he did, but it's one of the Golden Age original comics that he did, okay? And I'm pretty sure I have some of the Superman from Golden Age that he did, okay? And then after that, he only worked on one other Superman uh, miniseries. And that was uh, the non uh, chronological 1986 story, check this out, with Alan Moore. Whatever happened to the man of tomorrow, okay? So I'm going to keep, uh, keep this in mind. Uh, Kurt Swan, a good name to remember. And according to the website I looked at, um, which was uh, Comic Book Vine, which has basically the issues that the artists and creators have been referenced on the website, this guy is referenced by on 1,959 comic books. So he's done about 2,000 comic books, if most likely more. Okay. So a huge creator, huge creator. Okay. And Leonard Starr. Of course as well okay fantastic and it was a good price that we got it for the next comic 
this comic is is collectible there or this line is collectible it's something that is sought after and they go they don't go for premium prices but some of them do depending on the artists and stuff like this and it's target okay and this is target comics volume number nine issue number 11 came out in january 1949 and it's got kit carter as one of the characters in this right the cover of this this guy okay is done by jewel kurta and he's a creator of uh, martian manhunter and he was one of the original uh, one of the main creators in the golden age of comics artists he worked with lev gleason on crime titles and um the durango kid captain marvel jr romance and mystery titles he worked a lot right he was a and he was uh he one thing he wrote down here uh worked exclusively as an artist and inker for dc comics throughout the 1950s and 60s right so that's pretty cool having this uh he did a lot of work he's been credited with like 420 titles on comic vine for this right uh, another person that worked on this which i find interesting i try to track down is nina albright now she's only been credited with 14 titles but she was one of the original uh one of the few golden age comic book creators okay uh from the golden age of comics and then there is uh, uh william allison that's worked on this as well okay and another person that's worked on this which i found super cool was uh don rico rico okay and don rico is a co-creator of black widow okay and jan of the jungle leopard queen leopard girl and lorna the jungle girl and i have one or two issues of you know a couple of those titles okay they are sought after they're sort of like bad girl bad girl comics and jungle comics and stuff like this and depending on what's on the cover uh, they are definitely sought after so it's cool having you know his work here i'll probably flip through this um, uh, flip through this uh, at some point and take a look to see uh, if he's got any of the bad girl art in there okay cool nice to have and we ended up this is actually graded at very good and we ended up paying uh 325 canadian 244 us for this okay nice haul happy to have happy to have and a creator of black widow which is pretty cool right and black widow came out in uh, tales of suspense number 52 and uh, martian manhunter is uh, earlier 1955 uh, when did it come out 1955 okay when detective comics 225 and that's a major character okay this one let me show you this one this one i've been trying to track down i've been trying to get my hands on and we ended up getting it at a great price okay alarming tales number six also also okay now there's only uh there's only five i believe five or six issues of this i don't know if it started with number one so there must have been six issues of this this is the last issue in the series i believe okay and uh, this is harvey Car comics it came out in 1958 so that we consider it the early silver age okay and it's got work by al williamson and We've talked about Al Williamson a lot before. He was one of the pioneers of, from the golden age of comics into the uh, silver age of comics. And I believe the bronze age in the 1970s and 80s even, he did a lot of work. He worked for EC Comics a lot, okay? He worked on Two-Fisted Tales, Frontline Combat. He did a lot of war and Western comics, right? Another person, and this is an anthology, okay? Trippy cover, right? cool cover and it is an anthology and golden age of comics had a lot of anthologies and a lot of different creators working on titles right some giants here's the name of a couple of the other people that have worked on this okay bernard bailey 
co-creator of Spectre and Our Man has worked on this. Okay, Fred Kidda. Okay, he was a Japanese American worked on Airboy and Atlas Comics, and this is, uh, I believe. Let me see. Thrilling Adventures. And this is Harvey Car Comics, but it doesn't have the logo on it. And you can tell this came out after the comic code, right? Came into effect, right? This, this guy that we saw, there is no stamp on here. This comic code authority, right? Censorship stamp. So this one came out before the comic book kicked in. Okay. And this one as well, Gangbusters. There is no comic code authority on there, right? So that's a big uh, feature regarding when the Silver Age and Golden Age kick into kick into play. Okay, fantastic. And I'm gonna read you something I found on here. Okay, um, when I was looking into this, now Fred Kida, the Japanese American artist, he had a major role. I didn't know this, right? I didn't know a lot of stuff I looked up when I was looking uh, looking up the creators in this in this comic book hall, right? Uh, he drew the Amazing Spider-Man newsprint, the comic strip, okay, in the early 1980s. And another person that's worked on this, and just to let you know, Al Williamson has been credited with almost a thousand uh, comic books on Comic Vine, uh, one of the websites I was looking at, right? Another person that's worked on this is Angelo Torres, and he worked on EC Comics and Mad Comics as well, right? And another person who worked on this is Paul Riemann, and he's credited with almost 600, 700 comics, and he did a lot of work, known as one of Jack Kirby's frequent inkers, okay? And Paul Riemann, ready for this? Worked on Incredible Hulk number one, uh, X-Men number one to five and Avengers number two three and five right huge he's he worked on many 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 key issues right now regarding this I was doing some research on this I was just I went off on this and just this series as well now this series is on my big time radar list I'm going to try to get my hands on more of these right we paid 850 Canadian for this a 637 US right 1958 comic pretty imp incredible price pretty key issue with a lot of major characters major artists right but I found something that was listed on an eBay listing that was selling this issue a rundown version of this issue for a lot more than we paid for it right so let me read quoting the listing okay Quote, this listing is for a sweet copy of Alarming Tales number no. 6 by Harvey Car Comics from 1958. This series was an early Jack Kirby, Al Williamson, and John Severn sci-fi horror series, though this specific issue was not worked on by Kirby. That's okay, we'll take Al Williamson, right? Love Kirby, the king of comics. Al Williamson, giant as well, right? What makes this book famous is that there is a backup story, The King of Ants, which was created by John Severn while he was working at Harvey Comics as well as Marvel Comics at the time. Okay. While this story did not get much notoriety, it did grab the attention of Jack Kirby, who worked on all the other issues in the series, right? And there's six issues in the series, basically. At the time, Jack Kirby was working with John Severn on the series as well as other issues of the series. Um, hold on. At the time, Jack Kirby was working with John Severn on the series as well as Tales to Astonish and Strange Tales for Marvel Comics. So they took the concept back to Marvel Comics and did the first Ant-Man prototype in Tales of Suspense, which met with mixed reviews. Okay. And I believe I have that issue. Leading up to the leading up to the creation of Hank Pym, 
the original Ant-Man and star of the major motion picture by Marvel okay now you gotta remember this guy's trying to sell this comic right that makes that makes this the very prototype of Ant-Man character sadly grades low and it has uh, as it has substantial water damage da, 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 da. now this one is not the water damage one run right now should we take a look at this should we take a look at this we got chat going on <laughs> on uh, on twitch and uh, which story was it it is it is it is the king of ants let's crack this open and see where the king of ants appears right did I make a note of it yeah it should be the third story in the king of ants and the king of ants is done by Al Williamson and Angela uh, Angelo Torres right and this person was saying uh, Severn was working on it so you know there's a discrepancy there king of ants let's take a look at this this thing's got a little tape on let's see if you can see it if I hold it up and it was graded at uh, what's it graded at good very good so that's a pretty good price 637 US for good very good right it's got a little tape here so let's see if we can find the king of ants nice nice the king of ants take a look at this here's the table of contents right at the beginning alarming tales number six in this issue right take a look nice in this issue ambassadors ambassador from mars the emotion maker the king of ants uh the strange power of gary ford right and the king of ants it says this the soldier observed the ants and learned a valuable lesson in strategy cool let's see what we got let's see if we can find it moon descent who knows they look at us <laughs> nice there you like there you like the emotion maker King of Ants, look at that. Al Williamson, look at this panel, look at the start of this. Beautiful, beautiful, really phenomenal, right? Phenomenal. Doc, these little fall, uh, fellows are absolutely fascinating. The more you study them, the more you become intrigued by them. Dr. Cross, the plantation is being attacked by raiders. Oh, look at this. Indeed, he shrinks down. Super cool. How does he shrink down? I, I can't read it up this way. The things are too short, but I'll show you the panels. Take it like this. Look at that. I'll bring it close so you see it, right? So the story goes and there's an explosion right and something happens and boop, 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 boop. and this is sort of the shrinking thing they do and he shrinks down look at that look at that awesome and then there he is in silhouette right shrunken down very cool very cool <laughs> take a look at this and he's riding the ants right awesome awesome that is very cool very cool indeed and the story continues and then he shrinks up I'll show you the whole thing take a look so he's riding them 
right? Riding them. Move it back so cool. And then and then he shrinks back up again, right? Or zooms back up again, right? Very cool. Very happy to have this for the amazing price of six dollars and thirty-seven cents US, right? Wow, 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 wow. Let's put this back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Pure awesome. Right. What does the title say? Ambassador from Outer Space. what else we got let's see what else we got this one cool 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 let me show you this one I've been trying to get my hands on some of the golden age books that talk about the atomic bomb the atom age uh, the nuclear age and stuff like this so we got us War, War of Wars, Adam Age Combat, number one, from St. John Publications. Okay, and this came out in 1958, and it's got the comic code on there, right? And this is graded at good minus, okay? So it's basically graded at 1.8 out of 10 or so, right? Or 1. Well, 1. 1.8, 1. 1.5 maybe okay what i graded at that i would give this probably a good right we ended up getting this guy for 1250 canadian nine dollars and 37 cents us and that is a fantastic deal okay fantastic deal and uh i had to look this up uh there's only two places i found i found one place that said this which uh uh, who, the, who the person was that was working on this okay and i had to get it confirmed and i got it confirmed by looking this up on cgc the comic book grading one of the comic book grading companies right and the artwork for this is done by dick Ayers, okay and dick Ayers is huge he was one of the came through the golden age of comics did a lot of work in the silver age of comics copper age of comics bronze age of comics and modern age of comics dick Ayers has produced a ton of work right the websites I was looking into was here. Let me get this close so maybe you can read that. The website I was looking into to see how many titles people, uh, these artists worked on, the artists and creators worked on. I listed him as having credited with at least 1,500 comic books, right? So huge. And I know there's comic books that they haven't, they don't have listed that he's worked on, right? Fantastic. Great deal. Happy to have this. And... Uh, as far as Dick Ayers goes, I've mentioned this before. I've, I've published some comic books in the past, right? And I had a small comic book publishing company. And Dick Ayers did a lot of inks for Marvel Comics, uh, especially for Jack Kirby's pencils, right? So he, was, he did a lot of pencils, but he did way more inks than pencils, right? And he was, he was a sought-after inker, okay? A lot, right? So one of the comic books that i ended up publishing uh the creator of this comic book okay the guy who came out with the story and stuff he commissioned dick Ayers to do the inking for issue number one and this is the comic book that i published it's a gateful gateful cover so i'm gonna open it up okay the pencils were done by laval our um our main main artist for this comic book right but shadow patrick mckenna is the person who came up with this with the series and he knew he knew, back then in the early 1990s mid 1990s he knew his comic book history he, 
inside out, right? I saw his comic book collection. I went to Denver, Boulder, Colorado and visited him and stuff like this. And he had a huge collection in his garage and he had it all organized and he knew his comic books well, right? And he commissioned Dick Ayers to do the inks for Lavelle's pencils. And this is Dick Ayers inks, right? So I'm very proud to have said that I've published, uh, especially this comic book, whatever comic book published, but Dick Ayers uh, inks as well, right? That was one of the reasons I was very happy to get my hands on uh, this atomic age with Dick Ayers doing the work. Should we crack it open just to take a look at it? Let's take a look at it because we saw his inks, right? Let's take a look at his pencils as well. Okay. And I believe he did the inks and the pencils for this. It's very hard to dig, dig down, uh, get the info for these books. Okay. And this is good minus, right? So it's going to be fragile. So I'm going to be careful with this. Let's take a look. Look at this thing. The front cover is got a major rip on it. Oh, gentle, gentle. It's still attached, but barely. Right? Let me turn this. We're just going to do the first page. All right, take a look. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Okay, let's do maybe a little bit more. Nice on target. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a nice page for you. Oh, old leather neck. And this is a compilation as well. Take a look. Right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. very happy to have this very happy to have this let me put this back okay a fantastic deal at 9:37 us and there was another atomic age uh, uh, Adam Age Atomic Age, Adam Age Combat Series that came out in the early 50s. This is 1958. It came out as number one. It was continued with number two and three in another, uh, in another series, right? But in 1952, I believe, there was a, another uh, Atomic uh, sorry, Adam Age Combat Series that came out that I believe had like two or three issues in it. Okay. Let me show you this one. This is one of the ones we're gonna read. Okay. This one is was requested. I asked Nicholas that funded this haul if there was on a previous stream that we did, one of the cooking streams that we did where we made borscht. He showed up and I asked him if there was any type of comic books he liked, uh, he would be interested in reading. And I mentioned we had war comics, love comics, and stuff like this. I picked a couple of love comics to read. And he mentioned it would be great to read a war comic. So we're going to read through this. I haven't done the reading for it yet. Okay. Spy Fighters, number nine. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. Atlas Comics, 1952. Graded at good, very good. Okay. It's Marvel War Story, but Atlas Comics was basically a company that turned into Marvel Comics, right? So a lot of the people, original people that worked on Marvel Comics, they worked at Atlas Comics. They're the same people, right? Maybe Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, uh, Dick Ayers did some work, I believe, for Atlas Comics as well, right? This piece is an anthology again, okay? Let me take it out so you can see it without the glare right the cover let me show you the cover again we'll look at it without the plastic so you don't get the glare on there right the cover is done by Saul Saul Brodsky okay and Saul Brodsky 
is is a pretty big name he did a lot of work right uh let me read you a quote i mean he was active uh in comics for decades right let me bring this out that way you can see the cover beautiful cover and uh, it was colored by stan let me tell you who stan goldberg it was colored by stan goldberg and stan goldberg is huge as well right so the art was done by sol brodsky and the color was done by stan goldberg okay and stan goldberg uh worked for archie comics a lot did a lot of work for archie comics um and he did uh, the original colors for spider-man okay wow 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 okay uh, he did a lot of work for fantastic four as well and designed a lot of coloring for the fantastic four wow 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 okay huge and let me bring it close so you can see it in detail beautiful 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 right fantastic and regarding saul okay he was a comic book artist worked on marvel silver age production he did a lot of the back end stuff right and here's uh one quote quote saul was really and we're quoting who we're quoting right now is stan lee right so stan lee quote saul was really my right hand man for years right huge role to play in the back end uh, behind the scenes creating a lot of the superhero comics as well as the comics by atlas comics and war comics and western comics and everything and anything right uh, a long familiar logo of amazing spider-man so he worked on saw amazing spider-man logo right the one that we know okay that started off he worked on it okay um as other marvel logos still in use in the mid 2000s right he was he was i'm quoting okay uh and now i'm just not quoting stanley and just quoting the article okay he was uh belatedly credited after decade decades as the inker of jack kirby's pencils art for the fantastic four number three to four as well as many other landmark comics huge 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 okay quoting stan lee again my assistant for years and the company's production head he could write he could draw he could ink he could do everything nice okay we're gonna have a read through this okay and he's done how many stories he's done three stories in this there's a story called tonight we die uh the ones he's done tonight we die doom patrol and the tin soldier he's worked on and there's one story here by alan bellman okay and it's called the chance and alan bellman worked in the golden age of comics as well he, was, he worked on captain america he went towards submariner okay a lot of crime and um crime and mystery comics western comics and of course war comics right did i tell you how much we got this for let me tell you how much we got this for <laughs> ready for this let me let me put this back in its in its bag I couldn't believe it I had my price on this a lot higher than what we got it for and I waited I waited the seconds ticking down on the auction I waited I had it a lot higher than what we got it for and I had another bid higher than what I had I said I can't pay more than this and I went I need this comic book I even put a bid higher than what I had it for right just in case someone came in last second to press it and I pressed it just because I couldn't believe no one was bidding on this not yet anyway right three seconds before I pressed the higher bid right we ended up getting this comic for Canadian price ready one dollar <laughs> we got it for 75 cents US very 
happy to have this. Okay. We're going to do a read through this. Okay. Spy fighters number nine. I don't know how many stories we're going to read, but we're going to read war adventures of spies and action combats. Nice, nice, nice. Very sweet, very sweet. Okay. The next two comics, the next two comics, one of them I took three pages of notes on and I had to put it off, print it off on another thing. And the next one I took one page of notes on, right? So let's go through the ones where I took the notes because we've already, I've already shot the video for these. We've already done the readings for this. Okay. And I go into detail during the comic book reading of this okay but i'll cover some of it here uh, i'll cover here let me show you this is how much notes i took on this okay cut and paste some of the stuff i wrote uh, but a lot of cut and paste and just highlighting quotes and when i'm doing the readings what i do is post these up in front of me so when we're doing the readings i can reference uh, some of the things at the beginning of the intro, right? This is romance comic. Young Love, number 31, okay? It's, uh, it's marked as, it's numbered as March, okay? Number 31, and it came out in March 1952, right? And it's prize publications, right? If you remember... The first comic we looked at, right, which was uh, Papa Gangbusters. Uh, Leonard Starr was noted specifically on working on one of the first comics, love comics, romance comics that was ever published as a series, which was Young Romance, right, from Prize Publications, right, this logo right there. Okay, so the same company that. Leonard Starr and the company is Joe Simon right and Jack Kirby right huge and Joe Simon's Jack Kirby they got together in the golden age of comic books and they created a company that went for 20 years or something like this um, I have the notes on the years they were active from 1940 to 1950s to 1960s I believe yeah 1968 so Prize Comics put out comics from 1940 to 1968 and they were known for the romance comics when they started putting out romance comics with young romance right they were selling millions of copies they actually kicked up i think tripled their print run for romance comics number three or four right and at one point i read this i couldn't believe it over 90 percent of their print run for the publications all all the titles were printing were romance comics right specifically young romance huge 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 and this series young romance i believe it was a second series second romance series they put out after young romance and young romance came out in 1947 and uh young love came out in 1949 or something and this one this issue is 1952 okay and this is graded at very good minus Oh, uh, we read through this. I would have probably given this a very good, okay, not very good minus, okay. And we paid three dollars and twenty-five cents Canadian for it, two dollars and forty-four cents U.S. We read this. We're gonna go through this. Why is this important? Why is this huge? Well, Crestwood Publications sought after Prize Comics sought after Romance Comic from the Golden Age of Comics sought after jack kirby pencils for one of the stories <laughs> right <laughs> fantastic let me let me read you read you some of the people that worked on this okay jack kirby worked on this uh, mort meskin worked on this another huge creator okay in the golden age of comics and silver age of comics 
He's credited with like over 400 issues that he's worked on. George Russo's worked on this, and he's credited with almost 2,000 comic books from the 1940s to the 1980s. He was uh, he he was primarily or one of the people that inked uh, a lot of Jack Kirby's pencils, right? Uh, let me do a little quote for you, right? Uh, including the, so just reading reading this uh, one of the primary inkers for Jack Kirby's ink uh, pencils including on the landmark issues of Marvel's comics Fantastic Four over okay over five decades you created artwork for numerous publications including EC comics wow 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 right and he was staff colorist for Marvel comics uh, Bob Kane and Bill Finger check this out Check this out. Bob Kane and Bill Finger, the creators of Batman, hired him to assist inker Jerry Robertson on Batman stories. Russo's duties included drawing backgrounds, inking, and lettering, starting as early as Batman number two, right? And he's got uh, the second story, The Great Indoors, he's done the work for, right? One of the comic's most famous covers, Avengers number no. four, penciled by Jack Kirby and inked by Russos, right? The one where Captain America is entering the scene, the front lines, right? Classic. That issue is one of the core key collectible comics from the Silver Age of Comics, right? Another person that's worked on this is Mort Menskin, right? As I mentioned. And he's pretty big as well. Pretty pretty huge and one place I checked it Joe Simon was credited with doing work on this and Joe Simon is is huge he's one of the founding fathers of the comic book medium and of course Jack Kirby uh, he did actually the main story for this which is be my Valentine and just to give you an idea how huge Jack Kirby is Jack Kirby on the site that I was checking comic line is credited with how many over 3,000 issues to his name right so Jack Kirby 3,000 he's created basically some of the most beloved characters in comic book history right wow 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 and we read that okay <laughs> Jack Kirby pencil love story fantastic and it was trippy reading that that issue and they were by the way this guy the love stories in this at the bottom where we read the fine print it states that all the love stories are true all the stories the romance stories i call them love stories all the romance stories in this uh sort of compilation right are true stories so there's stories that people had sent in and they created uh little short five six seven eight ten eleven page stories of right fantastic fantastic okay now here's another love story we ended up reading okay. oh did i tell you how much we picked this up for i think i did but just in case i didn't we bought that one for 325 canadian 244 us right graded at very good minus what a steal what a steal fantastic price okay Here's another romance comic from the golden age of comics. It's a little older than the other one. This one, uh, Love Comics, uh, came out in 19, yeah, sorry, Young Love came out in 1952. This one, Life Story, this is Life Story number 13, came out in 1950. It's volume number three, number one from Fawcett Comics. Okay, it came out April 1950. Okay, graded at very good minus, same grade as the other one. Okay. And I really wanted this book because one of the stories of this is done by Wally Wood. Wally Wood. Wallace Wood. Okay. And I've shot the video for this. I've read through this. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Crazy romance stories. A lot of deception in this 
I was amazed, right? These are the stories that are told here. Okay. And the, the people that worked on this, Wally Wood, Wallace Wood, and he's huge, huge, huge. He did a lot of work for EC Comics. Okay. He did a lot of work in regards to crime, but, oh, sorry, in regards to science fiction. And the science fiction stuff, just do a little search for Wally Wood. This is his name here. Yeah. Wally Wood. Okay. And do Wally Wood and do image search and do sci fi. You'll be blown away by his covers and his, his science fiction artwork, right? And we might have read already. Because we've done, I believe, three or four EC comic reads, right? So we might have probably, I think we've already read one of Wally Wood's uh, stories, okay? I refer to him as Wally Wood, but uh, from what I understand, he didn't like being uh, called Wally. I didn't know this until I looked this up, we dig down a little deep, right? So he wanted, he, he liked Wallace Wood, right? Uh, so I think... Uh, in endearment everyone says Wally Wood and I that's what I've grown up with right and he's done huge he did he worked on trading cars advertising posters promotions marketing and stuff like this and here's a little quote from uh, William Gaines from EC Comics the person that you know the backbone of EC Comics right quote right so quoting William Gaines Wally may be uh, may have been our most troubled artist I'm not suggesting any connection but he may have been our most brilliant right this is the only Wally Wood romance comic that I have and I didn't know he did romance comics I'm gonna look for more of these right another person that's worked on this is Bob Powell okay and Bob Powell is is pretty big as well he had like 500 uh, issues to his credit from that site Wally Wood had 700 issues to his credit okay Bob Powell had 500 issues to his credit and he worked on Sheena Queen of the Jungle Mr. Mystic and he was one of the uh, founding artists of Black Hawk okay and he worked on trading cards Mars attacks trading cards as well now one other thing in this in the comic book read that we do I looked it up when I was looking at this because it wasn't on the cover. I didn't know to believe the website I was looking into and if it was the same person I was thinking of until we cracked this open. And the first time I cracked both of these love romance comics open was during the readings, right? So when we cracked it open, this comic book has a two-page exclusive interview with Gene Kelly okay and we'll read that whole interview in the comic book reading and gene kelly is one of the hollywood's old school actors and he was a dancer and singer he was phenomenal right he was fred astaire is considered to be one of the greatest or the greatest dancers in movie history gene kelly second very close second right or close or second fred astaire was fred astaire right Gene Kelly is amazing. I believe it's Gene Kelly that does the singing in the rain, where he's with the umbrella dancing. I believe so anyway. And during the interview that we read, the question is asked of him, what was his most uh, proud scene that he's done in the movies? And he mentions a scene in there, and we go through it. We read it. And uh, I still haven't grabbed that movie again because I remember that movie. There was a period where I went through... Uh, I went through uh, the uh, what do you call it a lot of black and white comic books and uh, and Gene Kelly was amazing okay I got some more notes here regarding the spy fighters okay the one we looked at the war comic that I don't think I mentioned but for spy fighters one of the other person that worked on this where is it let me bring spy fighters up again okay one of the other persons that worked on this was Joe. This got a story in this. Joe Sinat. Okay. And Joe Sinat, gigantic, huge. He's got like 1,200, 1,300 issues to his credit. And what do we got? We'll mention this during the read, right? 
uh, Joe's, you know, he's worked on Silver Surfer number one. He's Tales of Suspense, Mystic, uh, Mystery Tales, Uncanny Tales, Strange Tales, Astonishing X Men. Uh, so many, okay. And here, I'll read you this as well regarding Joe Sinoth. Marvel, uh, so Stanley in the mid 2000s cited Sinoth as the company's most in demand inker, right? So he did a lot of inking for Jack Kirby as well, okay. Now, quoting Stanley, pencilers used to hurl all sorts of dire threats at me if I didn't make certain that Joe and only Joe inked their pages. I knew I couldn't satisfy everyone and I had to save the very most important strips for him. To most pencilers, having Joe Senoth ink their artwork was, was tenement to grabbing the brass ring. And we're going to read uh, the one that Joe Senoth uh, most likely uh, inked as well. And Saul Brodsky pencil, the tin soldier. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Right. Let's see what else we got here. The next set of comics I got here are Walt Disney comics, okay? And most of them are Carl Barks comics. Actually, all of them have Carl Barks comics except one. <laughs> okay. So let me show you these. Let me show you these. Let me grab all of these in one shot. As you know, I've been collecting uh, Donald Duck, Walt Disney comics, uh, Walt Disney comics and stories, Uncle Scrooge and stuff like this. You would have seen these in previous comic book halls, right? So here's the ones we got. And all of the covers for all of these are Carl Barks. And Carl Barks has stories in them, at least one, two, three possibly and there are other artists that have worked on these right again they're sort of compilation of different artists and writers stories okay and Carl Barks was basically uh, associated with Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge basically the Donald Duck universe okay this one is uh, here I've got these I'm gonna go through these in order this way because they're ordered I'm gonna actually let me do this let me flip these around I got these backwards according to the notes I've written down here right here let's do actually this one we'll do at the end because it's the last one okay here's Walt Disney comic and stories number 144 okay and the, he, the seller had the price tags on here he had $15 but we ended up paying uh, three dollars and 25 cents Canadian for this two dollars and 44 cents US okay and this is Walt Disney comics comics and stories number 144 came out in 1952 pre-code and as great as good very good okay and it's got Carl and it's got Carl Barks art and cover by Carl Barks okay fantastic fantastic Okay, it also has uh, Al Falatero in it as well, and Frank uh, McSavage doing some work as well. Okay, his best known for his work are Donald Duck. So Terra Fellow, I got a little note here. I didn't know Terra Fellow. I, I I like collecting a lot of Carl Bark stuff, so I don't know the rest of the main uh, creators that worked on Donald Duck uh, and worked on Walt Disney Comics, but. Tara Firo is best known for his work on the Donald Duck comic strip, right? Cool, cool, cool. Good price. We got it at a good price. Here's Walt Disney Comic and Stories. Number 139. This should be number 139. Okay. Graded at good, very good. Again, Carl Barks. Cover and art. We paid... 550 Canadian 412 US fantastic fantastic very happy to have this I don't have this I don't think I have any of these these ones over the years I've randomly been just buying Carl Barks comics right Walt Disney comics and stories number 136 1952 graded at good fine 
right? Karl Barks. Fantastic. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Like, really, really beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. Look at Donald, right? Very cool. Again, this is now the cover for this. Uh, it's got Carl Barks art. Okay, this is Walt Disney Comics and Stories number 125. It's got Carl Barks art and it's graded and very good, right? And we paid $5.50 Canadian for 12 US. Okay, but the cover is done by, I gotta flip the page. <laughs> I got so much notes here. Carl but, uh, Beutner. Okay, it's Carl Beutner did the cover for this. And this is first appearance as go. First appearance of Huey, Dewey, and Louie as junior woodchucks. <laughs> as junior woodchucks. Fantastic. Okay. And Carl uh, Beutner was pretty big. Pretty big. Carl Beutner, should I read this to you? Sure, let's read it. Carl Beutner was an American comic book artist who worked in two vastly different genres. At the start of his career, he drew saucy, erotic cartoons for pulp magazines. I think we might have to get our hands on some of that. Later, he worked on various children's comics based on popular cartoon characters, most notably launching the comic book careers of Disney's Little Bad Wolf, Bucky Bug, and Pinocchio. He was in, he was in Factor, the creator of Little Bad Wolf, the good-natured son of the Big Bad Wolf, from the Three Little, Three Little Pigs. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fantastic. But Butler's four, uh, furthermore, set the artistic standard for comic stories with Warner Brothers, Bugs Bunny, and Porky Pig. Cool. We got another Carl on our radars, right? Fantastic, fantastic. Take a look at this one. Nice. And this one we that we ended up getting for five fifty Canadian, the price tag he had on it was thirty dollars, right? The next one. Very cool, very cool. Walt Disney Comics and Stories number one twenty four, right? From nineteen fifty one graded at fine it's got carl bark's cover and art inside it's also got floyd floyd gutfordson okay a two-page story mickey mouse floyd got i gotta pronounce this correctly gutfordson gutfordson and gutfordson is to mickey mouse what carl barks is to donald duck okay so Gutfordson's Floyd's artwork is seriously sought after as well in regards to Mickey Mouse comics. Okay, really big, fantastic. Okay, 550 Canadian, 412 US, and the price tag he got on this was like $75. And we ended up getting it for 550. I think that's a good deal. I'm pretty sure that's a good deal. <laughs> right and a walt disney comics and stories number 106 okay 1949 graded at very good minus okay and it's got carl barks art floyd gutfordson art walt kelly art dick moore's art bill wright art right and walt kelly is the person that created pogo okay and dick moore's created gasoline alley the comic strip gasoline alley and together the people that have worked on this they have thousands of comics to their name like really huge huge lots of comics to their name okay fantastic very happy to have this as well increase the walt disney donald duck comic book collection and we have one more Walt Disney's comic book, right? This is Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse and Pluto Battle, The Giant Ants. Okay. 
and this is uh, Dell four color number 279 Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse and Pluto came out in 1950 graded at fine and this one we paid uh, 1050 Canadian 787 US okay and Bill Wright did the cover for this and the main story okay, beautiful and it's in really good shape like yeah it's a nice nice copy the the Walt Disney stuff were pretty good shape the the comics that I have in my collection regarding Donald Duck and Walt Disney comics they're usually lower grade because like they go for cheaper right I don't for me as long as the comics are complete I'm happy 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 chicho right so uh, these were higher grades so uh, but they still went for a fantastic price right average well not average but most of them went for 550 Canadian you know four dollars US and this was eight dollars US or so good price happy to have this happy to have this okay and Bill right uh, da, 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 da. oh I gotta read you this as well I gotta read you this as well uh, yeah I gotta read you this as well one of the other people that worked on this okay and Bill Bill Wright huge Disney he worked at Disney until he died in the mid 1980s right but another person that worked on this was Tony Strubble okay now tony strubble let me read you what i dug up and i believe this is from wiki and tony strubble has like 1600 plus comic books to his name right so tony strubble was an american quote was an american comic artist and animator he was born in cleveland ohio and attended cleveland school of art from 1933 to 1937 with jerry siegel and Joe Schuster, creators of Superman, right? Who actually got some help from Strobel creating Superman. Gerald Jones in his book, Men of Tomorrow, reveals at one point, Jerry Siegel contemplated ending his partnership with Joe Schuster in developing what became Superman and work with someone else, someone else instead. Strobel was among those approached, approached by by him respectfully uh, approached approached by him he respectfully declined feeling his uh, more cartoony stylish was ill-suited for such a serious character right so if history if things worked out a little differently Tony Strobel would have been one of the creators of Superman crazy eh? crazy very cool let me show you another set of books that we ended up getting okay this set do I have these in order I have these in order 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 because we're gonna go through them in order oh here's this one this one was out of order let me put these in order okay these are actually let's count down on this because I have it listed in the in my notes backwards so we're gonna count down on this Okay. These are Jack Kirby. Okay. Jack Kirby books. This is Jack Kirby's creation. He did writing. He did for most of these. He did the cover. He did the writing, the script. He did the pencils, and I believe he did the inks for them as well. Did he do the inks? No, the inks were done. Jack Kirby did mainly pencils, right? Uh, the inks were done on one of them by on the first one we're going to look at by Bruce uh, Barry okay that also did the inks for all Mac and stuff but the rest of these I believe Jack Kirby da, 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 da. Uh, there's one other one uh, I'll mention number 16 is Mike Moyers and the rest of them I believe Jack Kirby did everything on him right command D right now I have the original commandies uh, the first few issues I should have like 12 15 of the first few issues but these were very good grades high grades and they were going for cheap getting these in high grades is is harder to do 
right so this is commanding number 23 came out in 1974 is graded at very good near mint right and this thing here <laughs> when i when i picked it up i was thinking jaws i was like hi this is way before jaws and the comic book uh, the seller and he had uh, listed it i believe in the description as well orca the movie that predated jaws as well i believe was like a, a killer whale we'll call it killer whale that uh, seeking revenge that came out in 1977 so this is pre orca as well right high grade very fine near mint and we got it for 425 canadian 318 us thank you very much fantastic i don't have this one here's commandy the last boy on earth right and commandy is is well known in this industry in the last couple of years um, they've done um, there was commandy challenge i believe it was a 12 issue where a lot of the great creators and comics each one of them took on one issue of uh commandy challenge and they did one issue of commandy challenge right so commandy is a pretty important character this is commandy number 22 okay graded very fine minus and jack kirby obviously jack kirby all of these right and we paid 324 for this canadian 243 us nice price nice price commandy number 21 okay very fine plus we paid 277 canadian two dollars and eight cents us awesome awesome right fantastic fantastic the last boy on earth commandy number 16 okay graded at very fine take a look look at that that's classic kirby that cover is absolutely brilliant take a look at this right number 16 came out in 1974 graded at very fine 225 us dollar 69 sorry 225 canadian dollar 69 us look at that look at that awesome experimental animals research lab they got humans in there eh? crazy and the inks for this were done by mike moyer okay and bruce uh, barry possibly as well cool cool commandy the last boy on earth number 14 graded at fine very fine we paid one dollar for this by the way all of them bagged and boarded one dollar right fantastic 75 cents us awesome 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 not bad for a dollar considering a lot of comic books charge you 25 cents for a back and board <laughs> in my area anyway <laughs> commandy the last boy on earth number 12 very fine mine is graded came out in 1973 two dollars and 75 cents us two dollars as canadian two dollars and eight cents us and very fine mine is great 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 look at this fantastic fantastic Commandy, the last boy on earth, number 11, graded at very fine minus 277 Canadian, 308, uh, 208 US, came out in 1973. Higher grades, very good. And Commandy, the last boy on earth, number three graded at fine very fine came out in 1973 we paid four dollars canadian three dollars us and it says it's the first appearance of uh tufton lord caesar's son okay cool 
Very nice, very nice. Very nice. And we got one more comic here. Okay. One more comic. This is the most expensive one. Okay. Avengers number 13. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we paid fair value for this. Okay. It wasn't a phenomenal deal. It wasn't paying too much. It was fair value. It's a going rate for this, right? Avengers number 13, right? From Marvel, obviously. February 1965. Stan Lee script right you got thor captain america and all that jazz it's a jack kirby cover okay and it's the first appearance okay where are we first appearance of count nefaria and the magi Ma magi okay guest appearance by the fantastic four first appearance of emergent Avengers Emergency Headquarters <laughs> first appearances and we ended up getting this for $38 Canadian $28.50 US okay definitely on the more expensive side I sort of I was trying to get he had some other Avengers on there I was trying to get them and they were going for a higher price and I was like I gotta get one Avengers out of this hall. I gotta get one Avengers out of this lot that he has up, right? He had higher numbers and he had lower numbers as well. So we ended up getting this one, which is the first appearance, which is always a key issue to have, right? For me, I consider everything to be a key issue to a certain degree, but glad to have this. Is Jack Kirby cover, okay? The script is Stan Lee. The pencils for this are Don Heck, okay? And Don Heck co-created Iron Man. I got list here: Hawkeye, Black Widow, Wonder Man, a whole bunch of characters. And the uh, inks for this, inks for this, ready? Dick Ayers. Dick Ayers did the inks for this. Fantastic. And then Artie uh, Simek, same Simek did the letters for this. Okay. Avengers number thirteen. Very happy to have this as well. Even the world's mightiest crusaders find themselves themselves helplessly trapped within the castle of Count Nefaria. Right. Cool. Count Nefaria. Look at him go. Right. You gasp with amazement as the most unexpected final panel you've ever seen see rick jones and his team brigade imprisoned in the dungeon of doom Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. <laughs> awesome 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 fantastic comic book i'm very happy to have these thank you very much nicholas for funding this uh, i hope you like i hope you love what we ended up getting okay and i hope you love the war comic that we're going to end up reading right spy fighters and i hope you love the two comic book romance comics that we've ended up reading and we'll have those up loaded up uh basically after this video is loaded up so expect those uh to be loaded up very very shortly if not right after this video okay uh, i hope you enjoyed uh, fantastic and we'll continue with the comic book readings and slowly as we get budget we'll do more comic book hauls and I might start giving some reviews and go over some of the comics that I have uh, in my collection as well right uh, some of the trade paperbacks people have been asking me to show them and stuff okay uh, aside from that thank you very much I hope you enjoyed and uh, I hope I didn't go too deep into the history of these things, but I went down the rabbit hole for this. I was just getting lost in the stories and the history and the connections and all the new information that I was finding uh, about the characters and the artists and the history behind the publishing companies, right? 
that's it for now, gang. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.